Want to know what the problem was? I plugged in that jack, not the microphone jack. Oh, love that. All right, guys, we're back. Hold on, let's get the first one. Um, it's been a very long day. A week of diesel. And Mrs. Pat Case Performance was really not happy about that, but today was just one of those days at work. I was actually working on a uh, reefer unit. Very tight knit spot, and uh, one of those things where when you're doing something, it could be one or two outcomes. One year a hero and two years a zero. Well, that was a zero. And really, it's not a zero. I just got covered in diesel. That's life. Speaking of, that's life. This, 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 this pressure. I was covered in diesel. I had a little epiphany. No, let's talk about this pressure washer. And then we'll talk about the epiphany that I had. Um, my experience with snow blowers, right? This is my first Briggs & Stratton motor that I worked on in this form. That is not mounted on a snow. Oh, I'm, I'm alive. I have a uh, tiller in the back of Husqvarna. That'll be another video. I've had that for a couple of years now, ever since we first bought the house. Anyway, there are no aftermarket options for Briggs and Stratton snowblow carburetor that I know. There was one. It was a couple dollars cheaper. But you're still looking around 50, 60 bucks for a Bridge and Stratton car wheel. So Jason, assumed. You know what happens when you assume things, right? That we were going to have the same obstacle with this. Even though we got it for free, I was just kind of really fixated on just getting this thing going. Because we're really at the end of Rototech. This thing will probably not be sold until next year, which is fine. It's fine. But sometimes I really try to make a good effort to keep the cost of acquisition down. Yes, I got it. The only thing I will have into this is a dollar air filter and a oil change. I'm contemplating on throwing royal purple in here or regular. Anyway. I don't know how much of this video I'm going to edit, but I spent a god awful amount of time trying to get this carburetor working. I even took out the needle and seat from another carburetor, put her in this, and it even got worse. So the point where I got aggravated and upset, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to order a new carburetor. Thinking of fighting back on tears. Tears of joy or tears of sadness. Got a new carburetor for us to $15, $15, I've wasted hours on this machine, it felt like hours, I don't know, my sanity's worth a lot more, let me show you something, and then we'll talk about my epiphany, which I kind of hinted to earlier in the video, and we're definitely going to do an experiment, oh, uh, for sure, because, I wouldn't say my expertise, but my passion is I really, really love snowblowers. I just I can't explain why. We never had one growing up. We did, but we weren't allowed to use it because it was very expensive. Um, I don't know. That's just like my jam. Give me a snowblower. You could talk for hours or run wild. Lawnmowers, a little, eh. You know, I could talk, but I don't know. It's just a little bit different for me. Um, snow blowers have the primer bulb on them, the Chinese ones. We're gonna, I'm gonna as we talk, I'm gonna work as we talk. Okay, so just imagine that 
Chinese snowblowers, like the one that was featured um, with uh, Dave, who, who blew up, ruined, or whatever. There are people that don't like priming their carburetors, which is fine. And what they do is they take a Honda carburetor on it, which does not require a prime, and they put it on their snowblower. They don't have to prime. Now, through my unfortunate extensive experience with Briggs and Shrek carburetors on snowblowers, is that when you order a Briggs and Stratton carburetor for a snowblower, I actually have a bunch of kits in my toolbox. You are going to get your carburetor from Briggs and Stratton. This assembly is going to be missing and the choke plate will not be installed. Because this carburetor fits many, many applications, you have to get the choke height lever that fits your application perfectly and put it in yourself and then install it on the machine. I am thinking that we can convert this to work with the snowblower. I do have one in the shed that I'm going to order a new one for. Um, I've been a little cheap with that snowblower. I've had that for two years and all it needs is a carburetor. I actually tried rebuilding it, new needle seat, the whole nine, and it still leaks gas. It's very, very frustrating for me. So I kind of just parked it. But now I have some rejuvenated um, experience. So we're going to be ordering another one of these. And what we're going to do is same thing. We're going to, see, look. See this? This just pulls out. And um, we're going to do some experimenting. Hopefully save you guys a lot of money. I like saving you guys money. I like saving me money. So yeah, let's get this thing off. Okay, now this should be very easy to do. You saw me have this thing apart a million times. <laughs> I have a fuel shuttle valve, which I thoroughly enjoy. Um, this is a lot easier than I imagined. This is the first time you're adding a inline fuel shuttle valve. I'm kind of glad I popped off that sticker and kind of just. The, just kind of fits and slides right in like it's meant to be so this is actually a two-fold thing a lot of the snowblowers that I get have the inline fuel shovel valve built in but now if they don't I'm going to add one I buy inline fuel shovel valves in bulk cheap from China so it's really not a lot to convert and I believe it adds value if you sell a snowblower with an inline if you were inline fuel shut off now you better put that in your head for easy off season storage or people who have a detached I mean detached I wish detached garage like me Part of that concern is fuel leaking out and onto the garage. So instead of shutting off the snowblower, you shut off the fuel valve, you run it dry, no fuel will leak out. Advertise that too. Remember, I know we're going on tangent outside of this. Whatever, if you're selling something, highlight every feature, every nook and cranny about it. That will show that you are knowledgeable about your machine, which you should be. Um, very well versed in it, which you should be because it's yours and uh, it's a feature right when you go buy a car you do the same thing the hell out all the features this is no different so we're gonna have this fixed in five minutes I hope it's just I don't know how I don't know how much editing I'm gonna do but uh, I really put in a very uh, heroic effort to keep this going. <laughs> More than I usually do. Don't ask me why I didn't take my own advice. Most mowers, if you're watching this, don't come here. Because I, I've told mowers in the past, 
Dude, it's crazy, bro. It's an eight dollar car, baby. What are you doing? And here I am. Hours. I'm 13. $13 and change. There will be an affiliate link for this. And you damn well know that if this works on a snowblower, we are going to push this carburetor to its limits because I actually have, I think, a six or seven horsepower engine. Um, I know that will work. But I'm not sure if it'll work on an E, 9, or 10. If we were talking Craftsman, I mean, sorry, Tecumseh. Tecumseh carburetors are great from like 5, I think, to 7. Then 8 to 10 are the same. So let's see how far we can push this brakes. And, because it's so damn cheap, I'm not afraid. It's a sacrifice one. And, play with the jet saws. Open up the jet, or just swap the, the jet from one machine to the next. What are you doing to be caught? I'm busy ranting. Oh, look, and it came with new gaskets. We need new gaskets? Look at this, I'm almost ranting with you guys. I'm not putting gaskets in. This is a complete kit. I mean, look at this $13. Intake. Right at the air. I mean, I can't. This is just, you know. Oh, it's still stuck on the car. Put the metal. So we'll put that in there. Let's take this bolt down. And then, I'll see if we're set. You guys are going to laugh at this one. Oh, yeah. Well, we should, I don't know, laugh, cry, whatever. But, like I said, pretty uh, upset of myself that I really spent this much time trying to save a $13 carburetor. One of the worst decisions I've ever made in my life. So let's open up the gas. This thing fires on the first part. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want it to fire on the first part, right? Let's match this up. No, nope. holy, holy. float in here by now. So how many poles do <laughs> you guys think this is going to take? But I 
think I'm going to show the whole video of me doing it. I won't say all of it. So let me just show you how I'm trying to clean the carburetor. Okay, choke. Get ready to fire in the hole. Whoa. Throttle. Fuel is on. Do we give it like a slow pull just to get the oil going? And we'll give it a little pump. What do you think? Alright, real pump. <laughs> Nothing nice to say, don't say anymore. I have really nothing nice to say right now about myself. So I'm an idiot. We're checking that. I would have uh, just looked at the carburetor online price first. I probably would have just ordered a new one. Think about it, man. I put it in an hour in my ultrasonic cleaner. Actually, over an hour, I think. Because I, yeah. yeah. And now in the ultrasonic cleaner. And once I got it done with the ultrasonic cleaner, I tried rebuilding it, cleaning it, all sorts of crazy things. I do it twice, so you guys do it nice. 